Hi, Jim Hebel with Bedecker Plastics here with another technical talk about advanced thermoplastic materials. Today's topic is geared toward designers, even machinists, manufacturing plastic polymer parts. Often misunderstood are the tolerances that one can expect to hold when machining plastic components. I'd like to cover the tolerances that you can expect to achieve not only for commodity plastics, but even the most extreme, highly engineered plastics. So, let's talk about tolerance expectations, specifically for plastic machined parts. Now, we come across design engineers that are redesigning their parts from metals to plastics in anticipation of yielding all the great benefits of engineered plastics. And we often see common, a common mistake made around part tolerancing. The engineers start with a metal part print and some very tight tolerances on those parts. And when the components are redraw redrawn or re-engineered into thermoplastic parts, they just drag those same very tight tolerances over onto the plastic part prints. And then they may run into trouble during the sourcing process when they get no quotes from their machine shops. This is because one of the limitations of plastics is that they do move more with temperature than traditional metals. And thus, it's a bit more difficult to hold tolerance on machined parts. It doesn't mean that you can't hold some tight tolerances with plastics, but you have to be aware of a few things and then set your expectations based on the parts you're trying to manufacture. So why do plastics move more than metals? Well, there are usually some internal stresses in the stock shapes, rods, sheets, and tubes that you're gonna machine into a component like this. And when you start cutting into those shapes, energy is released and you get material movement and it becomes more difficult for the machinist to hold tolerance. Also, the coefficient of linear thermal expansion, or the CLTE for plastics, is higher compared to metals, which means they move more with temperature change. And what is machining? But actually dragging a tool across the surface of the plastic, generating heat while cutting the polymer, hence leading to material movement as well. You can also have plastics with certain fillers, and those fillers can affect material movement as well. Fillers like glass and carbon fibers are put into the material to give it strength and stiffness. But when machinists start cutting into material with fibers, they're cutting into the fibers as well. And cutting into the fibers releases energy, causing material movement. So with polymers, you have to be a bit more cautious over what kind of tolerances you truly can expect to hold. There are other attributes that can play a part also. Certainly the size of your part plays a role. Are you making a component this size? Are you making a component that is 12 inches long, maybe 12 inches in diameter, maybe two foot, maybe three foot in size? Parts this big, you're gonna need wider tolerances compared to something that is much smaller with some finer features. In this case, you can have some tighter expectations for your tolerances. Aside from that, also part complexity can play a role. How complex are the features that are, you're going to machine into the part? The more detail, the more machining involved, will also play a part in determining your tolerance capability. And certainly, the material plays a big part as well. There are materials and polymers that are less stable than others. And some of the more extreme polymers are quite stable, and you can hold very tight tolerances. I'll give you a few general guidelines. Traditionally, plus or minus 10 thousandths of an inch is a really wide tolerance, and certainly with plastics, no problem to hold. Let's look at a fairly large part. Here is a rather large compressor labyrinth seal bearing. This bearing would have a large metal shaft turning inside the ID of this part. Tolerance control would be critical to its performance. If this were, say, made out of ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, or nylon, you would need some fairly wide tolerances, plus or minus 10 thousandths of an inch for sure, and probably more. And certainly that may not be acceptable for an application like this. However, if you made the part out of a more extreme material, then you can certainly tighten up those tolerances. I'll come back to this part. Traditionally, plus or minus 5 thousandths of an inch is no problem with plastics. Even this is relatively easy on most parts. If you start to get into plus or minus three thousandths of an inch, 
That also is typically achievable with plastics, and certainly for mid-range polymers. When I say mid-range, I'm referring to the size of the part and the material. Here's a food grade polyester piston machined out of a trade name material called Erdolite, PET. This is a great wear resistant, middle of the road thermoplastic that can handle 200 degrees Fahrenheit and plus or minus three thousandths of an inch tolerance is no problem at all. You see some fine features on this part that may be critical for the application and on a material and a part like this, plus or minus three thousandths tolerance is certainly achievable. Now, if you get into a more extreme application, for example, here's a component that goes under the ocean and it's used to hold electronics. There are holes machined into both ends and in the center is a very thin wall. And that wall thickness is critical, as is the ID dimension. This is a component manufactured out of glass-filled peak polyether ether ketone. And peak is a more extreme polymer and has the ability to hold tighter tolerances because it tends to move less with temperature change. And so it moves less during machining. Holding plus or minus one thousandths of an inch on a part like this is doable with the right material, the right geometry, and the right machining techniques. Another material that can handle plus or minus one thousandths of an inch is a material like PPSU, trade name Raydel. Here is an orthopedic trial instrument, which is a surgical tool that requires autoclave or sterilization after each use. So you can imagine a part like this, it's a very extreme application requiring a more advanced polymer. And for this, again, you can hold plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. If you get into smaller parts, like this mini bearing cage made out of Torlon polyamide imid, this part has much finer features and smaller dimensions and thus requires very tight tolerances. I even have a small bearing cage made out of a bearing grade of Torlon. You can barely see that in the jaws of my micrometer here. But in that case, here's another material that obviously with the size of this part would, would require very small tolerances. Such parts like that, one can expect to hold plus or minus one thousandth, one thousandths of an inch all day long, as long as the machine shop takes the right approach. And that approach often requires time, time to machine it properly. Here is an electrical insulator machined from Ultem PEI polyether imid. And this insulator has through holes that goes all the way through the part. You can barely see it there, but hopefully you see it good enough here for, uh, for you to get an idea of, of what we're talking about with this part. Certainly very fine, very small features tight tolerance expectations that are no doubt critical for the functionality of that part. In this case, plus or minus one thousandths of an inch for sure is required, but the engineer may actually want plus or minus half a thousandths or 0 0.0005 inches. And you can even do that as well with the right thermoplastic and the right machining approach and the right machining techniques. But the smaller tolerance that you require be aware the more expensive your component is going to be because the shop has to take extra precautions, extra steps, and extra time to be able to hit those tight tolerances. Now back to this large bearing. This is actually not a nylon part. This is actually machined from a carbon filled peak. Again, polyether ether ketone. It's machined from a tube and this large part has rather tight tolerances. There's critical requirements of plus or minus one thousandths of an inch on many aspects, even plus or minus half a thousandths on some of the more critical features. If you take a look, there's actually machined in teeth on the ID of this part. And the profile of those teeth are extremely critical. And a part like this requires a lot of time and a lot of machining knowledge to be able to hit those tight tolerances. But it can certainly be done on a part like this. Now, here is a ceramic filled peak component with over 3,000 tiny holes machined into it. 
These are drilled holes with very small walls between the holes. In a part like this, you can imagine how critical tolerances are to the functionality of the part. I'll say it again, in regard to tolerances, just understand that if you assign tight tolerances to your plastic part, you should expect to pay a premium because there's a lot of extra care, time, and effort that goes into machining to control that material movement that we talked about. So in summary, if your design can get away with tolerances of plus or minus five thousandths of an inch, then that is your best bet to get the most cost-effective plastic part from your machine shop. If you start to get down to plus or minus one thousandths of an inch or even tighter tolerance requirements, it certainly may be achievable, but the price of your part is going to go up significantly. The good news, Bedecker Plastics has folks that can help coach you through all this. We can walk you through not only the material selection, but the part design process. We can give you guidance as far as tolerance expectations. We can be there throughout the whole process. Please feel free to reach out. Please feel free to add your comments below or questions if you have them. I certainly look forward to trying to address them. And I hope this short talk was helpful. And as always, thanks for watching. Contact us with your plastic or composite sheet, rod, tube, or custom profile requirements. Give us a call. Quotes are free. We look forward to hearing from you.